How can you connect without interrupting, getting distracted or angry, avoid giving advice, fixing things, and immediately reacting? Two words, just listen. Sometimes it's easier said than done. In this video, you will get five strategies on how to become a better listener. Some are obvious, some are practical, and all have proven to be effective, yet rarely does anyone put in the consistent effort to follow through on these five. Watch what happens when you do. Hey, it's Riaz Mengchi, founder of the Every Conversation Counts platform and 17-year television broadcaster for weekly ideas on how you can connect deeper, ask better questions, and become a captivating storyteller on every stage. Subscribe to this channel and hit the bell so you get notified on the tips and tools that are released weekly to help you make every conversation count. Now, if there was one course that I wish was taught in school, it would be this, how to become a better listener. Listening is a skill that gets overlooked and misinterpretation can lead to misunderstanding and more importantly, missed opportunities when it comes to creating extraordinary connections and relationships. So what do we do about it? Well, after years of working as a television broadcaster where my job was to ask questions and actively listen to people for a living, here are five proven techniques to help you become a better listener. Number one, combat your distractions. Guess what? You are smarter than you think. Various studies on speech rate have proven your brain can think faster than the average person can speak. The average person speaks at about 125 words per minute, yet we have the mental capacity to absorb 400 words per minute. That means we only use 25% of mental capacity for understanding when someone's speaking, and if we don't pay attention, we could end up with the other 75% focusing on distractions, maybe smartphones, screens, daydreaming. In fact, in the book, The Plateau Effect, the authors share research that the simple possibility that someone's phone may ring decreases a person's learning skills by up to 20%. So keep that in mind the next time you leave your phone on the table during a meetup. The other challenge, the internal distractions like judgment or even thinking about your next question or snappy comeback. We've all been there, but our listening efficiency drops off significantly once we start focusing on what we can say next. If we stop waiting for our turn to talk and start actively supporting by giving others our full attention, real connection and understanding starts to happen. Number two, over-prepare to improvise. Over-prepare by knowing their interests, read their blog, their social media posts, maybe some unique experiences they've been on, and yeah, compose your questions, but understand the best way to engage someone as a listener is to create the space for unexpected truths to be revealed. How you do that, lead with their priorities, and one of my favorite questions, what's on your mind? Because once they share their priorities, you'll be able to ask them questions that you can't Google. And going into any conversation, over-preparing, that'll give you confidence. But stepping into their uncertainty by listening and improvising, that gives you connection. Number three, listen with your eyes. People wanna be seen, heard, and appreciated. And there is huge value in paying close attention to their nonverbal cues, their facial expressions. Are they fidgeting or gesturing? Maybe they're sweating. How's their posture? Estimates state 80% of what we communicate comes through these social cues. So read those signs to really connect the meaning to the messages they are sharing. And if we look at the virtual world today, this is the driving factor of emotional fatigue we are all experiencing with virtual meetups because it is that much harder to pick up on these social cues through a screen. Number four, ask, don't tell. An active listener asks the questions that help someone discover the meaning behind their own personal experiences. So when somebody is opening up, what if we didn't try to fix their problem, interrupt their thought, or start giving advice, but instead led by listening? If you feel the need to challenge their ideas, what if you listen first and let them complete their thought and challenge second so you create a more collaborative dialogue versus a full out confrontation? There are so many questions to ask to help people know that you're listening. If you're looking at their performance before giving any advice or feedback, allow them to validate their own experience by sharing their thoughts. You could ask them, how do you feel that went? Get their thoughts and then dig deeper. 
If you want to move them from conflict to considerations, two questions. What's something you feel would never happen? Then ask, what could you do to make it happen? Two very different trains of thought right there. Another goal is to evoke empathy and encourage others to see things through a different lens. You could ask, well, how do you think the others would feel about this decision? And if you want to help them discover the takeaways from their own experience, you could ask, what would you do differently if you could do it all over again? Above all, you want to be honest. And if you're listening and you feel like the connection is missing, you could call yourself out and ask, what question did I fail to ask here to understand your reality? So many questions we can ask to lean in to show people that we are listening and ask them what they think, feel, do, or maybe would do differently. Number five, document their details. Research at the University of Missouri confirms that generally speaking, we are all inefficient listeners. According to their findings, and I quote, right after listening to a 10 minute oral presentation, the average listener has heard, understood, and retained 50% of what was said. Within 48 hours, that drops off to a final retention level of 25%. So keep a beginner's mindset that everyone you meet has something to teach you, but you can light them up by asking this, do you mind if I take notes? This will help you retain the information and it's the biggest compliment you can give someone because they feel, one, you're listening, and two, that their words are meaningful. And use pen and paper when you write those down because you don't want to look distracted going through your phone. But once you build up your concentration and focus, you can take those notes after the conversation. As soon as you're done, take a moment and document the top three most powerful things someone shares with you. And if you are able to specifically reference their personal experiences that they shared when you reach out weeks, months, or even years later, you will blow them away by showcasing how you listen to them and how you were impacted by their words. Let me know in the comments section what has helped you become a better listener in your conversations. Would love to see as many tips as possible shared to help this community learn. For your free guide on how to make every conversation count, be sure to check out the link. You can find it in the description section below. Thanks for watching this video. For more ideas on how you can connect and have better conversations and even connect during your virtual meetups, be sure to check out these videos. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, and feel free to share this video with someone that you may think will use it. We'll see you in the next video.